Welcome back to Berlin, Germany, home of the LEC Troubleshot, bringing you the next game in Super Week, SK taking on Astralis. And let me make this real simple. If SK lose right now, they are eliminated from playoffs. It will be the second team to be eliminated. Astralis are obviously the most favored of all the teams in the race because they play XL tomorrow, Vitality on Sunday, and right now, SK. Okay, gaming. So Astralis' fate is in their own hands. Yeah, they're literally playing against every single team that's also in the running, which is why, in my opinion, they have to try extra hard because these teams are going to be hungry, Trevor. I mean, every team that still has a hope yeah. will have so much more at stake, so much more to play for, so much more potential drive, but also so much extra pressure. Absolutely. There's no room for errors. As a reminder, we are playing on 11.15. Auction is disabled. I'm going to turn to Trouble once more and ask uh, what your expectations are for the draft as we look ahead to SK and Astralis. I'd like to see actually what they're going to choose to leave open, because if I'm not wrong, SK is uh, blue side. So they can choose to leave some stuff open, force Astralis to ban a few of the OP picks like the uh, Zinzao and stuff like this, and then pick an OP pick for the side of SK. We've seen Treats run the Mundo a lot, and he also has gone to the hands of Genak, so they do usually prioritize that, but... Something that we did mention at the start is that a couple of ADCs have been picking up the AP bot laners, so the rest of the map can run AD, right? And Jezu has been one of these ADCs. He has indeed, and that means the Ziggs as well as the Syndra have been banned away. Zanzara's Trundle, which he has played five times in summer, is in the banned pool, and I wonder if Lee Sin will join as well. White Knight has played that in seven games. It will be the victor instead, though. He did say he was going to bonk tonight, so I don't think you play with these. Uh, you just have to ban out the Trundle completely. <laughs> Zara and Trundle definitely been an iconic duo this summer. Mundo? But a lot of those powerful picks are open. I mean, Thresh is still open and available. Mundo open as well. It will Lucian. be the Lucian lock-in. Viego went for... I'm surprised SK Gaming didn't pick Viego right here because I personally find one of the most broken picks on this path together with the Mundo. Now you can pick Viego and Thresh on the first rotation and then you have the absolute control of whatever you want to do in the bot lane, whatever you want to put Jeskla on. He's even played the Karthus if they want to pair that up with the Thresh. And there's no surprise. Thresh, the highest presence champion in summer. It is Promise Q's most played professional champion. 43 games, now the 44. And exactly as you predicted, Diego is locked in. Do you expect that to go into the jungle? Absolutely. He was, um, his Q was nerfed, but it was buffed. The damage was buffed against uh, monsters, monsters in the jungle. So it's much easier for him right now to do that. Ooh, but I really like this from SK. They're putting Jesu onto the Kalista, something aggressive. We've seen Jesu the past week really take over the Reef Rescue game, and he's been majorly stepping up. And Lilip on his time Kens last week was absolutely clutch with his ultimates, the Devour. And as I can see, Jezu has got 12 games of Kalista under his belt, eight of them victories. I'm gonna assume that Tom Kench goes with him in the bottom lane. We saw it top from Modawamne last week. Um, didn't make me particularly happy, but let's see how the rest of this draft plays out. Don't blame the champion, blame the game, quick shot. Okay, touche, I'll, I'll accept that. Um, I, I still have to decide if I like watching Tom Kench, I'm not sure, but I mean, Mundo still open and available. Let's see how that goes through in terms of phase two. And what uh, Jeskla wants to run in the bottom lane. So what SK needs right now is some heavy engage. They've got the two primary damage dealers. They need some AP and they need some engage. So it's so clever because Genex has played the Gragas in the top lane and he could fill both slots. He could fill both the AP damage and the engage. So they're getting it out of the way. They get Diana, which is the highest tier AP jungler. So they're leaving treats with the possibility of maybe picking out a Lilia, maybe a Rumble. We saw Selfmade running it as well. Or you can resort to Moon who also has some AP scale in his game. And of course, we're talking about AP so much because of the fact that Lucian and Callista are already sitting here yeah, for AD SK profiles. Gaming. So a lot of AD. It will be the Jinx banned away. So Jeskla has played that once, didn't win with it. I mean, this looks like an Aphelios game. You've got the Thresh, you've got the Orianna, you've got so much protection. Put Jeskla on something that he can hardcore carry with, something like the Aphelios. They banned the Jinx away. The next hyper ding, carry in my ding, head ding. is this emo dude. Okay, so another great prediction there, Trouble. 
And now for SK, how do they get AP damage into this composition and where do they find their engage? Those are the two things you were looking for. I was about to say Blue has played a really sick Syndra, but I forgot that would band yep. out in the first rotation. You still have the Victor to create space what? around your team if you want to. What? Whoa, that was buffed in 11.15. Okay, so that'll fit some of the AP profile. Don't forget Victor was banned away in phase one. Um, I'm not seeing a huge amount of engage just yet. Run at you, maybe throw a Tom Kench uh, is one of the options. That is Sats, a big brain pick right here at complete. I went through the, uh, the entire patch notes quick shot and I'm like, I don't necessarily see Mordecai coming back, so I didn't put it in my highlights, but we'll talk about it in game and treats. It's gonna be ballsy enough to pull out a uh, nerfed Gwen. Nerfed Gwen, a little surprised to see that one. Same. And as a quick start for you, this is the first Mordecai in, in 2021 in the LEC. It is obviously the first in summer. It's the first all year long. Is wait for this last pick to come in. And I want you to kind of explain to me how this composition is going to work from SK Gaming, because Astralis will be rounding down. There's out with the cannon. I'm scratching my head with a pen right now. People cannot see, but that's what I'm doing. It's so weird that you pick the cannon into the Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser usually wants to isolate a target that's going to have a huge impact in a team fight. And one of these uh, champions is going to be White Knight on the cannon. A huge Maelstrom could completely destroy a fight because as you can see, SK Gaming is full of squishy targets. So it could really impact the game. You can also pick out the Aphelios with the Mordekaiser. I think it's more on the execution type of style for SK Gaming whilst Astralis are going for a very Astralis composition right there. They're throwing all their eggs into the bases of Magic Felix, playing later on the, uh, with the Oriana. Then you have Zanzara on something that's more aggressive, that tries to create a little bit of havoc in the, um, in the Rift. And then, of course, Jessica, your carry onto one of the biggest hyper carries on the Rift. I just don't know how Mordekaiser gets to the targets. How does he make it through? It's fine, the target comes to you. Oh, well, we'll have to see. I mean, Kennen, of course, yes, diving forward. Viego as well. SK Gaming, if they lose, they are eliminated from playoffs. Can they make this composition work? The first Mordekaiser of 2021. So this was not a composition I was anticipating. And I'm going to ask you to review this for me because what we wanted was AP damage and initiation. How does the Gwen and the Mordekaiser tick those boxes for you, Trouble? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I said I think for SK, they're going onto something more... They just want to play the brawl and it depends on the skill and how they're going to play a fight, which is harder to execute, unfortunately, for them. Like, Blue has to come out ahead in lane, playing the Lucian 100%. Genax has to make the pick work because he blind picked that, which means he has fate. And I can see what they're trying to do, right? Trit is not going to care too much about the Maelstrom later on because he's going to go into his shroud and he's not going to take as much damage. Jez is not going to take too much damage or blue because Lilip is there to eat them if, uh, if this happens. But like, how both of these teams have such situational engages where I feel we're going to be seeing a game of ping pong. It's literally going to be these two teams trying to fight the miracle engage. And so far, Astralis have had way too many of these. Yeah, they really have. I mean, Astralis, six wins, nine losses this summer. And if you try to have a discussion with uh, really anybody about how Astralis win their games, Question where it's pink? like, I don't know, crazy plays, uh, magic, um, you know, 1v9 performances, Astralis just ma managed to find really, really impactful moments. And now they've got a bunch of champions that can do the same. But let's see how long it gets there. I think, though, I am going to call you out, Trouble. I don't think saying ping pong is the best analogy, because I'm currently watching a little bit of the Olympics, and uh, that the, this pace and the speed of professional tier ping pong is very, very intense. This time around, this game, I feel we're going to be a little bit uh, patient in the early stages. Okay, I'm going to widen the field. I'm going to make it a tennis court. 
So the back and forth of the ball are a little bit slower. I can give you but that one. It's going to be both teams trying to fish for something. It's either going to be the Tamkins trying to find a tongue lash. It's going to be Genax trying to get maybe flank and uh, put someone in the prison, basically. And on the other side, you're looking for a hook. Maybe you're looking for a Gravitom ultimate from Jeskla. Then you have White Knight on a potential flag with a Maelstrom. But none of these things are easy. Both teams have picked something that's harder to execute. But Astralis thrive in chaos. Yeah. Just to give a little bit of context, again, last time these two teams met, week one, the first game in summer, SK, the entire game ahead, 4,000 gold lead the whole time. One kick from White Knight's Lee Sin ended the game in two minutes. And of course, White Knight's Lee Sin went on to be particularly legendary. Oh. Philip will step forward with that abyssal dive and flash away from Jesley. He survives! Ooh. He survives! Flash and heal was used. Jesu and Lilip so, so close to setting that up. Oof. Really nice try right there from the SK bot lane because now they're going to also deprive him of farm. Promise you is level three. He can protect himself. There is a teleport from White Knight if he wants to come in for that. Oh, Promise you being jumped on. Snip, snip, snip. My treat, the ward was placed. Jeskla makes it out alive. I don't know if Observer can tell me what his HP was, but look at the summoner spells invested. One, two, three, five in the bottom lane. Yeah. And the most important thing is that Jezu still keeps his cleanse available, which means if they hook uh, Lance from Thresh, he'll be able to get away. But it's not the same thing for Jeskla because now he's going to be down in gold, down in experience, which is so important. And you give also Jezu a very free back. And now you also put Lilip onto the map because of that trade. Really, really well played. Of course, five summoner spells used in the dive. The sixth from Promise could keep himself alive. Thank you very much, producer Kevin, for trying to correct me on that one. And of course, Jezu's the danger man for SK. When we take a look at his performance in recent weeks, the impact that he has had, weeks one through five, a little bit of jungle proximity, negative gold difference, and damage per minute sitting at 421. Then week six and seven, as SK start to find their group, as Lilip joined the roster, and Treats was investing some time. The proximity goes up, the gold goes up, the damage per minute goes up, and now he's got an advantage already at five minutes. And also, always when we see a Tam Cairns, we always gravitate towards the thought of, oh, they want to play a little bit defensive. They want to have the Tam Cairns to play further back. They don't want to use it aggressively. This is an LPL type of Tam Cairns, the one that's going to dive you, the one that's going to engage you, the one that's going to run you down. And this is how Lilip is using it in this particular moment. Now, Jessica has to be extra cautious. Doesn't have any summoners available. Promise you has actually backed for an early refresh right there on his wards and get some uh, boots as well. And um, yeah, Jessica is going to be deprived of more experience. He will be. He's already down seven CS. That wave is pushing slowly back towards him. Got himself uh, the cull picked up. And I heard from our observers that he survived that previous engage with six Oof. HP. Now let's take a look at the rest of the map very quickly. Blue is ahead on CS against Magi Felix, as expected. White Knight with the slicing Maelstrom flashes forward, gets the stun backwards, pulled back by the hand. Genax still staying alive a few seconds longer. He's got the minions in the tower to survive. And Genax literally just walks away. And that is the reason why the Mordekaiser was picked. That W that we saw that was so large is what was buffed on Mordekaiser in 11.15. He has a bigger shield and the damage that he pops when it explodes is much larger as well, which gives a lot of freedom on SK's bot lane. Now, this is the type of play that you usually see from Rogue and Hans Sama when he plays the Kalista, the more aggressive, taking your turret platings and using that pressure around the map. So I would say all eyes on Jezu, seeing how he will use that advantage that they created down the bot lane to bleed it onto the map. It's going to be very challenging once the Viego and the Cannon start setting their sights on both Jezu and, and Blue. But SK Gaming, pressure in the bottom lane, they get the first Dragon, got some uh, significant advantage for Jezu, but it is at the cost of Gen X. Uh, I think uh, Plate was picked up there by White Knight. He had a CS lead before Gen X TP back into lane, but neither top laner has their flash. So potential targets everywhere. We also have to remember though, Genex doesn't have his flash, he has his ultimate, which is that one tool that creates a 2v1 into a 1v1 for the Mordekaiser. So I think it was very clever from Zanzara to make his way up top lane just at the cusp of Genex not hitting level six and trying to punish. I don't think at this point forward you can actually punish unless you bring three people with you. Oh, I mean, the timing is uh, very, very impressive. Didn't ultimately get the kill. 
for Zanzara. He's just hit his ultimate same for treats. Have to give some kudos here to Magi Felix. He's just six or seven CS down after how much Blue has been bullying and pushing into his lane. This time around, Magic Felix burns through his mana pool just to get the ultimate out. But neither mid lane has got mana to follow that up. So they're just farming this one out. Still, the cull for Blue, the cull for Jessler. I'm telling you, we're going to be in for a slower pace here. Um, I feel like everybody's going to want their ultimates. And I just, I'm very intrigued to see how they start these fights. You know, we've already talked about the flanking opportunities, but that, that takes time. You know, you have to set it up, you have to maybe get some flashes down. It's, it's going to be quite challenging. Setup. It also comes down to the players and how they see the map, or how they interpret, how they want to use their teleports, how they want to use their pathing. Uh, so far, Astralis has been the superior team to do that. They thrive in the darkness of the jungle and they thrive in the chaos because they will always find this clutch moment for themselves that we have absolutely no clue how it happens, but so far, SK have been having a very, very, very solid early game. They've been able to push Jessica's hyper carry behind. They've gotten so much golden experience onto Jezus Kalista. Again, all eyes, in my opinion, on Jesu on this game. How do you bleed the pressure onto the map? Well, we have to find out because Lilip will be able to make his way to level six momentarily. Is, uh going to be able to impact those other lanes. It's a thousand gold lead for SK. They've got themselves that dragon we've talked about. They've got themselves the ability to really just, again, take control. They just need to find the opportunities. Now, let's not discount the fact here. Talked a lot about the comp. On Astralis' side, if Zanzara is able to get a kill on really anybody from SK, with that ultimate, it's, uh, the uh, ability to become... Oh, it's going to be reset it's CT. huge. Yeah. And of course, can combo with the Shockwave, with the Slicing Maelstrom. There's so much AOE damage to open up target selection for Zanzara. And if we're also talking, let's let's wait and go late game. Oh boy, you've got an Aphelios. He's gonna he's gonna empty on you full 200 years of bullets that he has in his gun, right? You've got the Orianna, one of the most hard scaling AP champions in the mid lane. You've got Viego, who ultra scales as well, and a cannon that does so much damage in the late. So. All of their champions scale so massively much. The only thing that the... Oh? Hold that thought. We've got ourselves an engage. Fate's called used by Jezu. Lilith pops out, gets a small knockup. It's entered. I'm waiting to see where it goes. Defensive flashes away. The culling is pushing Magi Felix back. Still nobody down. The Rend will put some damage back onto Astralis, but nobody goes down. Yeah, a little bit over eager right there from Lilip. He oversteps his welcome. He's in between four members of Astralis. And remember, when SK was taking the Dragon, Astralis were too busy taking the Herald. Now they can use it to not only take tower platings in the mid lane, but to also take control of the bot side of the jungle for uh, from SK. Because in one minute, that Dragon's coming out. Up. Setting all this vision will allow you to play a little bit more aggressive on the bottom of the map. Well, Astralis have pushed all of those wards in. Uh, waiting to see how Jezu plays this out. The rest of Astralis have backed out. So White Knight, maybe hoping Jezu would step further forward. He's uh, still got that flash and the clans available, which will be very impactful if SK commit to this fight. Taking a look at ultimate cooldowns, it'll be relatively close. If Astralis decide to start that one, they're only missing the Shockwave, and White Knight's got his teleport up as well. And I was just about to say, if you look on your screens right now, oh, Lily, very clever. That ward right there could mean absolute death for SK, because when this dragon comes, you can actually potentially play and engage, and White Knight TPs in with a Maelstrom, and everyone just dies. So that was really clever from Lily right there to try and clean the lane before that dragon spawns. And if you can make the minimap zoom for me, Georgia, That's another one. Take a, take a look if you do the minimap zoom at the wards that Astralis placed on that last mid lane. There's two teleports available to them. They've got the opportunity, and now SK, they have to figure out how to either get control of the mid in the bottom lane or clear this vision out. Maybe they don't even know because the dragon has just spawned. They have to know, though, because the Rift Herald pushed mid and the entirety of the Astralis lineup walked into Treat's jungle. So they need to know that there are wards lurking behind them. Really, really nice vision toggle from our observers, highlighting what Astralis could see. Reminder, White Knight has TP, Genix currently does not. Dragon has been started, and this will get finished. Um, SK, either late to the party or not willing to. I think maybe not willing to. Blue kind of stepped into the river. And the call was, we got the first Dragon. Feel like they've got a lead. They do have a gold lead for the time being. And they don't commit to a fight that may have been suboptimal. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think the vision played a huge part in why SK did not want to move in there. They were being, uh, actually, there was like CCTV all over 
the bottom of the jungle, so Treats moved very cautiously. I don't think it's fine letting the stacking go, but you don't want to necessarily give too many kills for free. Again, when it comes to the scaling game, Astralis have got the upper hand on the scaling game in this particular game. But again, they're all squishy. This is why I said we're going to be playing ping pong later, because it's going to be both teams trying to find the squishy target to pick on first. But from my point of view, it's much easier for Astralis because they have a few more tools in their hands. Oh, the, the thing is, how do you execute, right? That's that's what we're going to judge. Um, I've just got a, an update from our stats team. The latest first blood of the summer season was 13 minutes and 22 seconds. It was Misfits versus Shulker back we in Break a record? Three. We've just broken the record. The first kill in this game will be the latest first blood of summer, and there's no way this is going to happen right now. Will Gen X be taken out? The answer will be a resounding yes. It's a matter of time. The Realm of Death has been used, and pop! The latest first blood by about 12 seconds immediately after the stats team set it up. Thank you so much. Astralis, get the first kill. That was also 13.37. Do you know what that spells out? Leet! And of course, go. for Astralis, the important thing is it closes that gold gap. You know, they were marginally behind SK, but it is Zanzara showing up in the top lane, managing to pick up the kill for the cannon. Yeah, and that is crucial, right? Because Gen X has been the recipient of all this pressure over and over again. And White Knight has been one of the clutch factors when we talk about Astralis and how do they bring this back and how do they fight and how do they find the Miracle Engages. Again, White Knight is one of these players in the team that will make it work for them. Getting that cannon ahead, he's got his proto belt already. He could get into the deep depths of the backline of SK and absolutely demolish them. Yeah, he can. And, and, and you know, White Knight has done that across the entire season. And a big reason why Astralis have picked up six of their wins. Of course, you can see the standings on your screen. 6-9 for Astralis, 6-9 for XL. And then SK sitting at 5-10. and 10. If SK lose this, they are eliminated. And I'm going to keep our eyes on Astralis for the time being as there is some wave pressure. Astralis, the reason they are so favored, they play SK, then XL, then Vitality. and can win out and ruin the chances of everybody else. There was a potential engage there, but an easy lantern from Promise Q. Gets Jess out, and that will be the first tower. So very close game thus far. Genax has been the target of Astralis. Repeated ganks. And now Lilip takes a dive over the wall to hop out from Jezu, putting a bunch of stacks into Promiscue. He's going to hop over the wall as well. And honestly, now SK are in trouble. Flash is available here for Lilip. Magic Phoenix dies! Magic Phoenix is taken out by the culling. He was channeling the TP. And SK find themselves a kill. Now Zanzara is on the hunt. After 13 minutes and 37 seconds of relatively calm laning, we get ourselves three quick kills in a matter of minutes. That was actually mistake after mistake. The Lilip Jezu situation. They tr Jezu never got into the Devour to try and get onto Jeskla. He wasn't there to put down the damage. Lilip has to burn his flash right there because he's all alone. Then Mata Felix is like, it's okay, I got you guys re engaged. But he's still being really close to Blue, and Blue actually ends up killing him. Whoa! Huge, huge, huge. Okay, and let's see this again because Jezu does not hop into the Devourer to take that channel. Oh, Lily didn't channel it long enough for him to get in, which means that not enough damage can be done to Jeskla. And by the time they jump over, Promise Q is over the wall as well. And then Magic Felix is like, it's okay, guys, I'm coming. And Blue is like, no, you're not going anywhere but the fountain. I mean, so much damage. Blue's already completed his mythic has got himself a 27 CS advantage, got a kill to his name, and really has been trying to bully and, and punish Magi Felix as much as possible. Managing to do that for the time being. And as we now are 30 seconds from the next Drake, Tower was answered by Astralis in the top lane. So it is one for one in that regard. This time though, Georgia, SK have got vision. They're inside the river early enough. Uh, do they though? Because look where Astralis is. They're lurking right there. They also have the Reef Trail. They can pop it down mid and force SK out of there. Oh, I really like that little Sentinel. The Death Sentence connects onto Lope. He's got no flash, remember? Great help is burned through. Magic Felix gets himself the kill. Now all of a sudden, SK are routed and they're they, back away. <laughs> I mean, Astralis just get an easy pick and using the vision well. That was brilliantly done. They knew SK was going to walk in. They knew SK wanted to get the vision. They just bunched themselves up in a bush, and then Lilip ends up walking into Fog of War. Obviously, Promise you lands a really beautiful Q, and that's history. It is indeed. It is the second dragon secured, 
That is something Escape cannot afford to lose. You need to be the one stacking up the dragons. You need to be the one going for the soul because Astralis will do more damage in the late game. They outscale you. So that's really scary for Escape at this point. And Astralis can actually chill. And especially when you consider how much of a sort of advantage Jezu was able to build during the course of the early game. It's all gone. It has. It's been absolutely obliterated. Uh-oh. Now Promise Q not going to land the death sentence this time around. Jezu throws out the ultimate, flashes over the wall. Here comes Zanzara. The Shockwave won't find a target just yet. Slicing Maelstrom does. Two people stunned. Jezu has already used every summon spell. Stays alive a few seconds longer before Magic Felix. Command attacks him down. Astralis find two more kills, and Astralis are punishing SK. Yeah, they're bringing everyone to the party to punish again. Jezu and Lily. This Kalista cannot snowball. And now Jeskla is allowed to get back a lot of experience. He's been farming. He's only six CS away from uh, Jesu, but he's the one scaling more towards the lake. And he's the one that's going to be the hyper carry. And Jesu needs to be the one bleeding the map for uh, Astralis right now. And he's not doing that. Astralis are punishing that bot lane that needed to, to be out of control right now. And they're not for yeah, SK. They're, they're really not. Zanzara, 100% kill participation. Invested a lot of time to get White Knight ahead and, and uh, you know, dealing with this Mordekaiser, then transition to everywhere. And I have to say it, treats on this Gwen has been invisible. I don't believe I have seen or felt his influence, and Zenzara has just had sort of free reign of the Rift so far. No, he has pretty much camouflaged with the Rift at this point. Tritz doesn't have any agency in the map. Tritz hasn't tried to make any gank work in the map. And I think I, I also give it back to the pick, going for the Gwen. Where is your engage? Where is your frontline potential? The Mundo was open, up and available. You've got AP in the top lane with the Mordekaiser. It's one of his favorite picks as well. There will be so many more influential picks, the Hecarim, the Volibear, so many. And they choose to go with a champion that hasn't really done anything so far. No, absolutely not. And of course now, the farming and now level 11. It is still a small gold lead, 1,800 at 20 minutes. But the lead feels significantly larger because, first of all, SK have made some individual and some team mistakes around the map, Astralis punished. And also, as Astralis have created or initiated plays, they've made them work. They found the kills, they found the objectives. And just like this at the moment, they are being uh, applying all of the pressure to SK. I'm going to give this back to what Goldbox said on the desk. He's like, they're untiltable. They've got Magic Felix. He refuses to lose because he will try to the very end. And the whole Astralis is playing with the same sentiment. They don't want to lose. They refuse to lose. Playing from a deficit is their comfort zone. That's why, that's why I'm worried that they're ahead here, Trevor. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that that is actually true. Uh, we looked at some of the numbers last weekend. And I think Astralis in their win still have a negative two and a half thousand gold. Yeah, in their lanes as well. Minutes. It's crazy. It is, a, it is a team that is right. I think untiltable. Uh, you're 100% correct on that one. And Astralis will always be willing to make that final stand, make that final moment. This time around, they're not, they're not going to need it, right? Because you've already talked about the composition and the scaling. You've talked about how Astralis can play, sort of have the tools to deal with SK in the late game. They've got a dragon lead. They've got a gold lead. And they are the ones that seem to be dictating what happens in the course of the game. Also, what we haven't mentioned so far is how everyone from SK is short range. If you look at Lucian and Kalista, very short range AD carries. If you look at Treats, melee. If you look at Mordekaiser, melee. White Knight is going to keep everyone away. You step into the Thunder, you're going to get stunned. And everyone has a very short range, so they have to in order to reach Jeskla, in order to reach Mad Felix, you're going to have to walk into that. It's just, for me, this composition is just so hard to execute from SK unless Gen X gets some miracle flank and decimates Jeskla, decimates White Knight before he can use his ultimate. I'm sorry, but it looks quite grim. It really does. It really does. Now, it'll be up to us to actually execute, right? Because they've also got a relatively um, unique composition to play, but they have been able to make it work thus far. And I'm going to just go back to this Mordekaiser pick for a moment. All time in the LEC, it's 15 wins and 15 losses. And it's one of the champions that I'm always intrigued to see how it plays, but I rarely feel that it is hugely impactful. Zanzara is going to be able to sidestep the pullback, and Janus chucks out that obliterate. It is three seconds to Dragon. 
SK this time around have a few members nearby. Teleport is being channeled here from blue, right in the mid lane, but Astralis is set up. If SK step into the darkness, will be caught out, and here comes White Knight as well. Yeah, Genax will play frontline right here, but I don't know if he's tanky enough. And seeing White Knight coming in from the flank, I'd be very scared. Look where the SK members are, they're all together. Well, that's Charles, they've pushed forward. SK will be able to secure the Dragon, but at what cost? Treats is caught inside the pit. Shockwave won't really find a target, just by dashing over the wall, Treats goes down. As Charles get the first kill, Zenzara continues the chase forward. Now Tom comes out, and not gonna be enough just yet. Blue is stuck inside the Maelstrom. One, two, three members of SK Gaming are taken out for the cost of the Dragon. Yeah, no vision, no reason being into the bot side, Riva. You do get the Dragon, but you lose the Baron because Astralis kills three members, including your jungle that has the smite. So it's fine. Again, Astralis, hashtag we scale. We don't care about losing the Dragon. We need to open the map. And how do you open the map? You get Baron up minions, you spread them into three lanes, you start taking towers, you bleed your vision into the enemy jungle. They played the map so well um, for the last 10 minutes. Still 100% kill participation for Zanzara. And I think if the replay does come up, I'd love to take a look at how Astralis stayed in the river. They were waiting for SK to step forward. And as soon as SK did, Astralis just, they were set up ready and waiting. I think at this point, it doesn't really matter if you have vision, because White Knight is threatening to come in anyway. So the entirety of SK need to back off. They can't do any damage. Streets isolated into the Dragon Pit and no one can help. And once you start running away, you split, and Astralis are picking you up one by one. Of course, that sounds all right. Getting those resets, turned himself into the Gwen. Managed to continue the chase. Team fight damage. I mean, oh, in before the Kek, yeah. Kek W0 start coming in, right? SK Gaming will be eliminated from playoffs if Astralis close this out, and you have to feel that they've got all the tools to do so. Baron empowered minions, a teleport on White Knight. They get the fourth tower of the game. I think that fight summed up how Astralis want to play this game. And Lilith might be caught out again. So you will, Fate's Call just for safety. That's one of the tools now not available for the re-engage. Astralis looking for Tower 5, are looking for Tower 6. They are daring SK to step forward. They're bleeding two lanes, they're doing this right. They're splitting their Baron buff. They're putting the strongest members together. And look at White Knight and Zanzara. Anyone steps forward to defend that tier two mid lane tower is gonna be instantly punished. That will be the case. That will be the fifth tower secured. Astralis, six and nine in the standings. We'll play Excel tomorrow, they will play Vitality. Those games are gonna be so intriguing to see who takes that sixth and final spot in the regular season to advance to playoffs. We will be saying goodbye to SK in postseason if they don't turn this around. And I don't think that uh, it's very easy. 7,000 gold deficit, again, Baron doing very well. But getting into the inhibitor, while Blue and Treats have a flank opportunity, it's not going to work out just yet. Yeah, this, this would be the point where you're like, what does SK have to do to come back into this game? Honestly, I'm throwing my hands up in the air. I don't think there's an easy way, unless Astralis really badly mess up, unless Elder is up and they lose a fight, then yes, I can see SK probably winning. But if we're going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, if we're going to go team fight, Astralis have scale. Yeah. All the important items have been bought. Two items onto Jeskla. Guess what? He doesn't care about the Mordekaiser. He also has the QSS. Three items onto Magic Felix with the Hourglass, which is so important. Hourglass for uh, White Knight's cannon. And of course, Zanzara on the Viego doesn't need anything more than the, uh, the Sandara. Much. The yeah. Sandara, but he has another item too. Exactly. And he's got like, just so far ahead of treats. Two level advantage already. There was a level advantage very briefly there from Magic Felix. The only thing that has gone well for SK is Blue getting a kill on somebody who wasn't even fighting. Yeah, yeah, that's the case. And unfortunately, didn't uh, pan out. So SK Gaming now down to their last legs. Zanzara chucks out the mist. He's out. He's uh, damage for now. No further follow up. Lilith did not decide to chase. Big chunk from Mordekaiser. Lands that Q down, but he needs so much more time. He needs so much more support. Of course, the Strauss have got a big advantage. Baron is timed out. It's 40 seconds until the next Dragon. It feels to me like the Strauss are just stepping forward. They're looking for a target to jump onto if they have trouble. And that will be Genux. That'll be the case. Rumble has, uh, Rumble of Death Rider has been shut down the box in the background. Treats tried something and it simply did not work. As Strauss melted him before he could get anything done. Genux is the next to fall. 
Ravitsum comes out, Fate's call to keep a little up alive. Five versus three. Astralis are going to be pushing onto the Nexus. Astralis will push SK to 2022 as they will eliminate SK from playoffs if they finish this out. The flash forward, there's the slicing maelstrom. One is already down. Jansu goes golden for a little bit, but he's pulled all the way backwards. It's a double kill for Magi Felix. The towers will fall. The Nexus will be the focus, and every member but Jeskla stays alive. The minions are slowly being thinned out, but the Nexus will be the target, and Astralis take down SK Gaming. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> the dream dies here, obviously, for SK Gaming. But props to Astralis. They pulled off this draft. They knew it was hard to execute. They knew they scaled better. It was still hard to execute. The only kill they let go through was when Magi Felix was not even fighting. He was trying to teleport to support the team. Yeah. So Astralis, one step closer to playoffs. SK are now eliminated. As you can see the faces on your screen. Just before saying a word about SK, uh, everybody at home, you can vote for key up player of the game at LEC on Twitter, White Knight, Zanzara, and Promise Q. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for SK when you think about the roster, when you think about the changes in the midseason, when you see the impact that Lilip had once he joined. Uh, the last two weeks, SK looked significantly better. What could have been is those questions you're always going to ask. But at the moment, they are now the second team eliminated along with Shelka. Unfortunately, Trouble, you don't get to say anything. We'll get back to you in a moment. And we'll learn more about this game after the break as Astralis <laughs> took a huge step towards the summer playoffs. I'm so sorry. I talked way it's too fine. long. It's fine. It's I talked fine. way too long. Anyways, it's bye. Fine. See you on the side of this. The planet and us are connected. We share its veins. We can continue to clog them or do something about it. By using millions of recycled plastic bottles in our new generation of durable washer and washer dryer tubs, we reduce plastic waste from leaking into nature's veins. Discover Beko's Eco Tub Washers and Washer Dryers for healthy living on a healthy planet.
Welcome back to the LEC Astralis. Stay in the playoff race. And that's the end of the road for SK Gaming today as they were defeated by Astralis. And Jessica, thank you so much for joining me. SK knew that they had to win against you, to, against you today to stay in the playoff race. Although I'm kind of intrigued by the draft they choose today against you. But what did you think about this, especially the Mordekaiser blind and the overall maybe lack of engage against you guys? Well, I think it's it's a very hard draft to execute. It's uh, they have to play like super well early game. Mm -hmm. you know, they kind of have to snowball bot really hard, and then they just play weak side with Mordekaiser, and we can't really do much to him. But since uh, they they weren't really proactive, they got a Drake, uh, a bit of CS lead. They actually you know can't win the game. You know they actually need to kill us on repeat and you know swap their bot lane to top. Uh, so it's just very hard for them to actually play. While uh, you know our champs are way easier to actually play, play. Yeah, I can imagine that you were not too worried uh, about this game and the draft and how it developed. During the past few weeks, I said that Jesu was actually one of the good points for SK Gaming. What did you think about the matchup against him today? Mm, I mean, honestly, it wasn't much, uh, much of laning. I uh, yeah. still, uh, you know, I'm a bit confused about Tomkin still, honestly. So you know, it, it wasn't much laning, but I think he's for sure like one of the stronger points for SK. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just wasn't much laning, honestly. <laughs> About Tam Kench, you mentioned the champion, which is interesting because we saw the big top lane also support. When you say you're confused about Tam Kench, do you think about this game specifically or Tam Kench as a support now that it's been reworked? Uh, I think just Tam Kench in general, like uh, after the rework, I don't necessarily know the range and everything. And I think it's actually really strong, uh, just depending on you know, how to be the right game. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's for sure, you know, it's tough to play versus on stage, I think, because if you misstep one time, you know, if he's out of vision uh, and you misstep, then you actually die and then it can be a very hard game to actually play. All right, well, we'll see how teams use the picks in the games to come. But talking about you and Astralis and the race for playoffs, everything's still open for you. So how do you see the next game develop for Astralis and you? I mean, I'm very confident. I think my team is very confident, actually, that you know, we will make playoffs for sure. I think uh, this win today is pretty huge for us. And I think if we win tomorrow, which uh, we should, I think uh, everyone is very confident. Um, then I think we almost, you know, uh, locked in a way. Yeah. But I think we go 3-0 this weekend. I'm very confident. Uh, I'm very looking forward to the games. All right, 3-0. It is good to see how it goes for you guys, but I like the confidence just classic. Thank you very much for the interview and Thank good you. luck on the rest of Super Week. Thank you so much. And for more on that game, back to you, Sharks. Thank you so much, Lore. Uh, wonderful to hear from Jeskla. And honestly, also awesome to hear the confidence coming out of him and Astralis, because this should be a, a done deal almost when you look at the schedule and how um, effective Astralis has been against the teams around them in the standings. This does mean that SK are now eliminated from playoff contention. Ender, we heard it there from Jeskla as well. He said, I was a bit confused about some of the choices coming out of the draft for SK Gaming. What was your read on it? I mean, I, I had the same opinion. Uh, SK Gaming went for this composition, like you just heard, that was like so focused on like crushing their lanes, like the bot lane and mid lane in particular. Like, yeah, you're going to get a big CS lead, but you're running double marksmen. You don't really have that many great forms of engage. The Gwen sort of looked for a dive at one point in the bot lane, but it's really hard to play super proactively with a composition like that. That's one where you gather a CS lead very casually. Like you're not really killing your opponents and gaining large advantages. And on top of that, it was just like no first blood for 13 minutes. We stayed in our lanes for like 20 minutes. Like that was crazy. They weren't really doing much proactivity on the map because they're like, okay, if we stay in our lanes, we gain a small advantage, but it just didn't really feel like there was a good way for them to win the game. And I actually saw like right after the, the game ended on Twitter, Jez's came out and said that it was a terrible draft, you know, and, and he was not upset with the way that panned out. They're going to try their best to, to have a good performance in the last two games, but that is, that is a really sour way to uh, lose your playoff hopes. Yeah, definitely is i didn't know about that tweet but that does make me think that goldberg you kind of know because everyone can see what the blueprint is coming out of astralis and they did well in banning about some of the the picks and making sure that zanzara wouldn't be on a strundle or whatnot but it's not like you can't replicate that with other drafts as we saw here by astralis it does make me wonder this is your elimination game 
it's not good enough for me to say just afterwards, oh, well, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel a certain kind of way about it. But maybe I'm, I'm reading no, too much I, into know, it. You know, you, obviously, you can argue from both sides. But I agree to you with the point that you put yourself in a situation where it's so hard to execute. And to touch on it quite lightly, but you are on the clock on a composition like that. They threw out some attacks we saw towards the bot lane, but they had Thresh. They let Thresh go through. You didn't first pick it yourself. Right, great. Then Promise Q is just going to land to land to just just glow away. So every time you had an attack, there's just nothing you can do about it. Not only did you have struggles with your own draft, you also had struggles playing into Astralis draft with this draft. Andrew? Exactly right. Like I, I thought Astralis came in with a lot of fantastic answers from, you know, drafting the really powerful bot lane, the scaling in the mid lane to even Viego and being able to reset and, and take over either marksman. That's a dream come fights later on to the game. And this Kennen trouble touched on it during the cast. Uh, but like everyone's very low range. It, it's a Kennen's dream to be able to run in against a team composition like that. Callista won't be able to move. Even if she has a clench, she's going to get repeat CSE'd. So it wasn't just like some mistakes in the draft I felt from SK that made their win conditions very narrow. Arrow. It was Astralis recognizing that and absolutely tearing them apart within it. Yeah, uh, and I think it's always important also to look at what, you know, the enemy team then did right. If your draft wasn't good, but Astralis still has to win the game. Ender, talk me through this next replay that we have in the bot side where Astralis uh, are able to turn it around. Well, this is sort of what I was uh, uh, talking about earlier where it just felt like it felt like SK was just very content to sort of walk back in, you know, not do much proactive. They, they didn't really know where they wanted to go on the map. So they're like, okay, I guess Lucian stay mid. We're going to walk back into our bottom lane, but they have no control over this bottom side of the map. They're walking over Vision. They know they're on top of Vision, but look at that. Astralis have found a way to play proactively. So not only are, is SK not finding a way to, you know, step on the gas and, and play on the offense. No, it's Astralis that are managing to do that, that are managing to group up. And as soon as Astralis start to group up, and start to hit their item breakpoints, there is no stopping that train. You know, you kind of have to look like, how can SK try to play through a side lane? But even then, like after the Tom Kench changes, he can't go that far to help out a Mordekaiser and stuff like that. So it's, it's really tough. Even on a side lane, it's not like Mordekaiser is the greatest win conditions as well. And I, you know, you look at this from Astralis point of view, you know exactly what your game plan is. It's really just a no-brainer coming into this one. You have the Orianna, you have a Felius Thresh. It, it, it should be illegal to lose a team fight if, if once you get to that mid-game. And, and you see it here, like they work at a, goal, uh, at a goal deficit in the beginning. We talked a bit about it as well. That's Astralis' comfort spot. Yes, also that, but their team composition is also just designed to fall behind early. And once you hit that mid-game power spike, you just clearly saw there's nothing SK could do. Like, it doesn't matter how well you play. You can only play with the tools you have drafted for yourself. No, Reckless was asked on Euphoria, who makes it to the playoffs. He said Astralis, because they seem on the same page. They uh, just make every decision together. And it shows in the games because they adhere to their game plan that they've set out for themselves in every single game versus these teams below them in the standings. Let's take a look with that in mind at this Astralis. Astralis fight. You said it would be illegal to lose a game, and they don't. They know what they have to do here. Yes, the dragon does get smited away, but it doesn't really matter. It, it, it genuinely doesn't. It, it, it's also just the fact that it, it comes as close as it possibly can at this point. But Astralis, they're feeling super confident to just walk in on towards these objectives. And yes, you have the safety net of the Tom Kench, but there's also so much CC that's can, that can disrupt the little whatever that is you call when he goes <laughs> underground, right? So it's just incredibly hard to play these games. And yes, there's the safety of the Tom Kench, but it's nowhere near as, as safely as it, as it was in the past. No, once again. And uh, the Kia player of the game was Zanzara with 52% of the votes. I think Ender people were like, He's not on Trundle and he can win a game. Let's give this man <laughs> the player of the game. This man's got a champion ocean. He's got like 90% Trundle and then Viego on top. He's got some other stuff. It's all memes. But honestly, like uh, Zanzara was able to find a lot of really good attacks in the top lane early on. The laning phase lasted for so long. He's like, yeah, I guess I can just gank top lane at 15 minutes. It's still a it's still a normal game. And, you know, breaking the hopes of uh, of SK fans everywhere, even more than my, my door is broken. Oh, no, I didn't even notice it. See, sometimes you don't have to draw attention to the negatives, then other people won't Everyone either. already knows. Everyone okay, knows. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Uh, in any case, though, I'm an optimist. The glass is always half full, and the glass is definitely half full for Astralis because they are in that race for playoffs in pole position, and the pressure is now on XL Esports, who face off against Rogue in our next game. Don't miss it. Man, I hope, it, I hope it's full of coffee. <laughs>